ladies and gentlemen, and a very good evening to all of you. The recent COVID-19 pandemic has severely affected all of us, our countries, our economies, and above all, our common people, our workers, our retail traders, exporters, importers, and not to mention in the least, our entire vital health sector. The economic delivering a triple shock to the young generation of our country by eliminating their jobs, disrupting their education and training, and creating obstacles to seek or move between the jobs. We also have a challenge to gainfully employ in agriculture our returning migrant workers and local workers employed in the cities who are without jobs. Besides, the ongoing pandemic prompted all sectors, public and private, to seek online or digital solutions for all aspects of businesses, be it for purchase or sale of necessaries, conducting meetings or holding classes and exams, pushing us into e-commerce and different aspects of the fourth industrial revolution. The challenges of addressing the disruptions caused by the pandemic need focus attention on both recovery at work as well as how we can create conditions for accelerated growth that would help overcome the challenges which we are facing now. It is in this context that the consumer commerce industry has taken the initiative to organize a series of three webinars in collaboration with Bangladesh Investment and Development Authority in quick succession, starting today with the first one on post-COVID-19 challenges and opportunities for entrepreneurship and employment in agro-based industry. We expect to hold the second webinar on e-commerce in Bangladesh on September 19, 2020, followed by the third one on the current status for fourth industrial revolution on October 3, 2020. Today's event is split into two sessions, beginning with an opening session, giving an overview of the government, especially of BIDA's initiative as to promotion of skill development and entrepreneurship in the country. Before I invite Mr. Ikiyam Hafizullah Khan, Project Director Entrepreneurship and Skill Development Project, to make his presentation, I'd like to share with you that our participants will have an option, questions and a message option of Zoom and Facebook. So, I mean, if there is any questions, we have a, uh, a window where we will see the questions and uh, we can answer those. With this, I'd like to request Mr. Abdulim to proceed with his presentation. Mr. Abdulim, Khan. Thank you very much. Uh, first, I would like to share my screen, but uh, probably some technical problems are here. So, uh, some of those relevant participants is screen sharing. So, I asked Rubaba to share, to allow me to share the screen, please, first. and good evening everybody. I heartedly welcome one and all present here. I am A.K.M. Hafizullah Khan, Project Director of Entrepreneurship and Skill Development Project, ESDP, which has been taken from Bangladesh Investment Development Authority, BIDA, under Prime Minister's Office. 
and definitely it's my privilege and pleasure on behalf of BIDA to welcome you all here today. We are really honored to have with us today as our chief guest, Dr. Ahmed Kaikaus, sir, Honorable Principal Secretary to the Prime Minister, Prime Minister's Office, to the today's session chair, Mr. Mohammad Shirajul Islam, sir, Honorable Executive Chairman, Bangladesh Investment Development Authority, BIDA, Prime Minister's Office, and the moderator of today's session, Mr. Syed Mahmoudul Haq, President of French Bangladesh Chamber of Commerce. And finally, all the distinguished guests of today's session, uh, it's an honor to have you all with us. Thank you. Uh, distinguished participants, before going to the presentation as project director, I would like to take the opportunity to shed some lights on our undergoing project. Due to the time constraint, I am not going into details, rather I will only mention the goal and objectives that we have set and will share the project statistics that we are achieving even in this uh, pandemic situation. Uh, now, the project actually, uh, in order to increase the investment in the private sector, government has initiated to take this development project under Prime Minister's Office from Bangladesh Investment Development Authority. And the mission of this project is to train 24,000 young, educated, technology-based and unemployed youths throughout the country. The vision of this project is to accomplish the sustainable development goal, goal number eight, which is decent work and economic growth, and reach the target of private sector investment uh, according to the seventh five-year plan, which is the 34% of total GDP. The project goal is to train 24,000 entrepreneurs within this project period. We are progressing satisfactorily towards the target. Our honorable guests will be delighted and happy to know that already we have successfully completed trainings more than 14,000 training in the middle of this project. And a radiant advent of brilliant entrepreneurs coming out. As a result, 2,926 entrepreneurs have launched their first ever business. Eventually, so far, almost more than 26,000 employment has been created in these business houses. One note I would like to mention here, and this is as per international statistics, after completing the trainings, only 1% to 2% of the trainees have been set up into entrepreneurship. On the contrary, this project, it has been observed that almost 20%, uh, I should say more than 20% of the trainees are taking the baby steps to become successful entrepreneurs. That shows the high potential readiness and business thirst of our resilient young generation. Moreover, the new entrepreneurs who came out with successful training already invested almost 800 crore BDT into their new business ventures, which is a potential private sector investment in our economic advancement. I think it is really surprising. Uh, these new entrepreneurs convince us to believe in that our young generation mindset is changing from job seeking to job creating. Even so, this is not the scenario from the capital city of Dhaka, but rather, uh, I think I, I should say entrepreneurs are mushrooming from every part and corners of the country. Another thing is that during the pandemic situation, we are continuing our training via online classes, and that turned out to be an, another unique example of readiness and technological adaptability of our potential years. Now, um, the impact of COVID-19 pandemic in different sectors. The economy of Bangladesh has been hit hard by the COVID-19 pandemic. With the immediate response of government, Bangladesh has recorded an impressive GDP growth despite the devastating impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. According to the surveillance of BIDA, uh, BIDA statistics, there are almost 17 potential sectors in our country, and these are the ICT sector, governments, uh, leather goods, electric, electric and electronic sector, telecommunication, plastics, and so on. And one of, one of the most important sector is agro-based uh, industry also. 
or we know that almost uh, all the sectors are affected during COVID-19. Among them, the most loser sectors are aviation industry, tourism and hospitality industry, garments and textile sector, agriculture and agro process industry are severely affected. Here I am showing some sort of picture of the most loser sectors. Now the aviation sector, aviation sector, the worldwide travel have, has been banned amid the COVID-19 outbreak severe adverse effects on global aviation industry. It put the airlines in Bangladesh under extreme financial pressure as well. The number of flights has drastically dropped after the lockdown as almost all the flights are suspended. According to the survey of Daily Star, this figure shows before COVID-19 outbreak, B1 Bangladesh were running more than 2,000 flights, flights in a week. But this number goes down at only 15 to 20 flights in a week same as Nahoya and US Bangla Airlines also. And now tourism and hospitality industry. The pandemic has confronted the tourism and hospitality industry with an unprecedented challenge. According to the Tour Operators Association of Bangladesh, the tourism sector is projected to loss around 57 billion BDT, putting the jobs of around 40 billion people directly or indirectly engaged at risk. This is the one of the most important sectors in our country, that's the RMG sector. The COVID-19 pandemic has already had a profound impact on the supply chain and demand for the apparel sector. In this pandemic situation, apparel manufacturers in Bangladesh are in despair because many brands and retailers have already cancelled production orders amid the coronavirus pandemic. According to the BGMA, more than 1,000 factories have reported cancellations or withdrawals of orders. Now, the most important part, the shutting down all Bangladeshi startups. Uh, as a project director, I am directly involved with the entrepreneurs at the field level in 64 districts nationwide. That I am experiencing the enigma, interest, enthusiasm, and readiness of our competent startup yields. In this regard, I know the problems, eagerness, keenness, and cushioning of our young entrepreneurs. Let's have a look. Uh, the COVID-19 has impacted startups in Bangladesh. We did a survey conducted on our ESDP, Entrepreneurship and Skill Development Entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs coming from ESDP projects, and Bangladesh starts COVID-19 response group in April to May. Uh, now moving to our analysis, uh, the slide shows 56% businesses saw at least a 50% drop on revenue generation, where business 24% uh, businesses had to be shut down completely, and uh, almost 32% significant decrease in businesses, 22% a small decrease and some uh, significant increase in business and that is very few and uh, five percent only the second is seed stage startups they also saw the decreases in their businesses almost our analysis saying that 56 percent of startups are 50 percent drop on revenue generation uh, 21 percent significant decrease in business and 12 percent a small decrease in business we can also see that 3% startups are completely closed at series stage A and 2% are closed in series B stage also. And now, uh, how the uh, measure? Uh, the survey says 54% 54, 54 reduction of variable cost and salary are the first measure taken by the startups. Actually, uh, here we see there are 55, 59% startups seek uh, leverage in times of crisis due to COVID-19. Though almost all sectors are in decrease mode of their revenue generation, but there is an exception. Uh, we see grocery, logistics, and fintech. These are the essential sectors that have seen positive impact in business. 
Uh, now the SME scenario, COVID-19 has uh, also a great impact already in SME sectors in Bangladesh. Uh, Light Cases Partners and Sheba XYZ collaborated on an independent study about the COVID-19 impact on SME of Bangladesh. This survey was conducted over 230 SMEs respondents from all over the Bangladesh covering industries involving trading and production and service industry. Here from this survey, we see that 52% SMEs have completely shut down its operation. At least 50, while 50, while 28% SMEs have been revenue drop. Now, the what they prefer, prefer actually 52% SMEs. They are preferring uh, the soft loans at lower interest to survey to survive uh, this crisis also. And 42% of enterprises have cut down, cut their marketing expense down to zero. Choice of optimizing cost has been to halt all marketing expenses. And finally, our today's focus actually in agriculture. Uh, here I should say Bangladesh is already a country which depends quite heavily on agriculture. Almost 87% of the rural population get at least some income from agriculture. However, two-thirds of rural households rely on both farm and non-farm incomes. Agriculture can play a big role in overcoming the upcoming challenges in the post-COVID-19 uh, era. Findings of various reports show that the impact of coronavirus on agriculture is huge. Uh, today, our honorable keynote speaker, Dr. Saktar Mondo, sir, he is present here. He is the former Vice Chancellor of Bangladesh Agriculture University and Emeritus Professor of Bangladesh uh, Agriculture University. Uh, he will share the clear picture on agriculture. Uh, that's why I am skipping this. Uh, now, the, here I'd like to share some challenges of our startups and existing entrepreneurs facing during this pandemic situation. The economic distress has added to existing problems such as lack of access to finance, poor market linkage, absence of skill level, lack of export market. If we can overcome these problems, uh, we expect we can easily find out our way forward. Now the way forward, um, uh, here is some observation from SME and serious stage entrepreneurs as well as startup entrepreneurs also. Uh, the way forward, uh, we are observing concession loan, maybe one of the way forward, tax reduction and grants, and uh, government, some government states, and digital, inform, uh, digital transformation. From the current international practices as well from our study, we observed that 70% of the respondents asked for soft loans, working capital loans to survive the crisis. And uh, digital transformation, one of the most important part for way forward, we have digital financial services, digital supply chain management, and digital credit also the, maybe the solution. So like digital financial uh, services, we can say mobile financial services like Bcash, Rocket, Ucash, Nogod, open new doors, can open new doors in transferring, transaction, and storing money digitally instead of cash. And supply chains having web enabled capabilities render enterprises the ability to source and sell on digital platforms. That is a digital uh, tool uh, uh, for the digital supply chain, chain management. Uh, already, Sheba, XYZ, and Shopup also provide digital credit to SMEs and small enterprises, also, which are underserved by traditional banks. They are also leveraging digital platforms to exploit credit assessment. Actually, uh, this is all about, I now I sincerely appreciate that I have had this opportunity to present to you, and that brings me to the end. I'd like to thank you all for your valuable time and attention today. I would now be interested to hear from you all with your valuable thoughts. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Um, uh, thank you. Thank you, office, for a very eloquent presentation. It's quite comprehensive. We have dealt with challenges, impact, 
challenges and opportunities. Uh, I think you um, have given a broad overview what we are going to discuss in the three of the webinars from today that we are going to launch. Uh, so as you know, today uh, we'll be just focusing on challenges, opportunities for entrepreneurship and employment in agro-based industry. Um, since independence, agriculture in Bangladesh played the most important role in providing food security, creating jobs, generating income, and reducing poverty. Currently, the share of agriculture and GDP is around 13%, while its share in employment is close to 40%. 40% indicating a much lower agricultural productivity. The pandemic has further aggravated the situation with the migration of urban jobless workers and the overseas returning workers to the rural areas. In times of crisis, agriculture has always been the shock absorber, the savior. Whenever a crisis struck, as in the case of ongoing pandemic, we have returned to agriculture for food and for livelihoods. In today's discussions, we would like to see if it is realistic to imagine a scenario world where agriculture not only remains the guarantor of food security, but also emerges as an engine of growth for the overall economy. Uh, today, we have with us a very rich set of panelists representing the government, the industry, the academia, and our prospective technology partner from France. Uh, here, I, I'd like to mention that the panelists have the option to make the interventions either in Bengali or English. And as we proceed, Actually, we have our reporters. They are taking note of our presentations, including of Mr. Hafiz, and the recommendations. Uh, we will prepare a, a small and we'll pass on to um, uh, Honorable Chief Guest and the Chair uh, prior to uh, they take the floor. So I'll, I'll do this uh, through WhatsApp because, uh, that, of course, on the chat box maybe it's it be too long. So I, what I'll do is I'll prepare this and I'll pass this on to WhatsApp to both of them. So with this, uh, I'd like to uh, invite uh, Dr. Satan Mandal, a meters professor and former vice chancellor of Bangladesh Agriculture University, to go ahead with his uh, uh, presentation. As a matter of fact, we'll be leading the discussions and introduce the subject for our viewers and participants. Thank you, Dr. Satan Mandal. Thank you very much, um, uh, Mamadul Haq. Um, Respected Chair, Honorable Chief Guest, Excellencies, Distinguished Panelists, and participants from home and abroad, very good evening. And welcome to my very brief, short presentation. I'm very pleased to have this opportunity to share my ideas with this distinguished panel and with this distinguished forum as well. Let me begin with the context that uh, there has been an impressive growth in agricultural GDP, around 3% plus over the recent decades. Average yield of rice crop at 3.2 tons per hectare and aggregate total factor productivity growth at about 2.7 percent up to 2010 have been very impressive and encouraging for an economy which is moving from a subsistence agriculture based economy to a commercial uh, agriculture However, this trend has slowed down overall, especially in the fisheries and livestock subsector. So, subsector. 
due to supply chain disruption caused by COVID. But these two subsectors have already started regaining its position gradually. But hopefully, unless there are other kind of issues coming in, either from natural or environmental side, hopefully that will regain even more. What lessons do we learn uh, about this growth in agriculture? Well, the first lesson is that favorable policy support from the government to large scale privatization of agriculture, especially in the form of irrigation, mechanization, improved input distribution, liberal credit, research and development have been the key drivers to this growth. They have been the driver because that led to the generation of a new and advanced technologies in terms of improved seeds, improved animal breeds, production technology, healthcare services, not only for crops, but also for animals and aquatic agriculture. And above all, farmers in this country have shown a very positive supply responses to prices and profits. And that has significantly contributed to the growth process. And that then brings us to a number of issues that we can bring into our consideration. Number one is there are formidable challenges now, which are evident during this COVID. And one can imagine that many of it might continue even in the post COVID era. Nobody knows when that post COVID era would begin. The first challenge is for the country is to sustain this growth momentum in agriculture and rural economy, which has given us employment, income. The next challenge is the quick recovery of this pandemic hit subsector like fisheries and livestock. The other challenge remains the reduction of yield gaps, not only for crop sector, but also fish and livestock production sector. And above everything, our very impending problem of worry is the creating challenge of creating the employment opportunities in agriculture and rural economy. And how can we do that? We can do that through strengthening farm and non rural non farm linkages. Agriculture alone cannot generate all this employment for this labor, especially when the additional huge number influx of labor have returned to the villages either from cities or from abroad. And we have also to expand the backward and forward linkages in agricultural production system together with investment in productive rural infrastructure. Now, where are the investment windows for tomorrow's agriculture? I'm coming to give you ideas about the actionable kind of platform or opportunities for investment in agriculture. In my understanding for rapid commercialization of agriculture, which has begun already, increased investment should come from the private sector, first of all, and they have done it very successfully so far. Why? Because farmers in commercial agriculture produce mainly for the market, and therefore they are dependent on market signals from agribusiness companies, from feed industry actors, from processors and market players. The second investment window, in my understanding, that for any private sector investor, economies of scale is very important for productivity and efficiency gains. So one way to deal with this problem in a smallholder fragmented agriculture 
is to promote operational consolidation of farm through changing the organization of production and service delivery at commercial scale. And that includes contract farming, this farming, greenhouse production, smart and precision farming, all of which will use ICT and artificial intelligence based technologies. And in terms of segment of this investment, appropriate scale mechanization, not only for crops, but also for inland and marine fisheries, poultry and livestock sectors are the imperatives now. The next investment window I can see is the high tech frontier research in biotechnology, genetically modified foods, tissue culture, greenhouse production, hydroponics or aquaponics, and in animal agriculture, the embryo transfer or modern dairy farms. In aquatic agriculture, recirculatory aquaculture system or bioflux, many of you might have seen this development these days. And then other areas of investment include non-conventional product development. And I have given an example of how this vermic compost or biofertilizer can be produced from about 3 million tons of poultry wastes, which are almost completely waste in Bangladesh really. All we need is integration of a system which will collect this faulty waste or biomass from the scattered sources in the countryside and put into the industry line. We can also think of exporting fungus and tilapia fillet, which is, uh, and Hilsha, and Hilsha export will need certification and blue label. And we can also invest in marine fisheries, which are untapped largely. Other areas of investment in my understanding is the investment in urban and peri-urban agriculture, which provides us fresh vegetables, fruits, fish, poultry meat, and et cetera. And during this COVID period, we have experienced that how these very urban agriculture and partly urban agriculture have supported us with these very basic fresh food materials. And, and finally, I would say that public investment would be needed for strengthening legal institutions who will take care of good agricultural practices and traceability compliances for food safety, not only for domestic market, but also for accelerating our export in the international market. And finally, I'll just share with you that how this financing of tomorrow's agriculture for high-tech agriculture would be done. So first of all, who needs credit? In our understanding, it is the young entrepreneurs. And the previous presentation gave us an indication very clearly that these are the young entrepreneurs, including women entrepreneurs and service providers for crops and horticulture, aquatic and animal farming, they need credit. Now there are multiple options that we can use to channel this credit to this entrepreneur. One is our conventional nationalized commercial banks, agricultural banks and others. They cannot always reach the client or the target farmers because of complex loan disbursement procedures. So this process will need reorientation of this banking institution so that they can upscale their loan disbursement and so that net cash flow could be increased for the rural areas. Private banks are still very shy in coming to invest in modern agriculture. And since now it's a commercial agriculture, giving a reasonable profit margin and prestige and sustainable in the long run, private banks might think and reconsider coming to investment in agropreneurs really, particularly for long-term lumpy investment. And finally, I would say that non-banking institutions 
which in our research and understanding have proved effective for refinancing credit through dealer system. And the system has worked very well in channeling improved seeds, feeds, medicines, dual chicks, machineries, even supporting machinery manufacturers and all that. This system can be further improved and expanded using good practices of microfinance institutions, PKSF, SME Foundation and NGOs, especially about how they have done and dealt with this endemic question of managing loan collateral issues. With these few words, I would finish here and thank you very much for your passion hearing. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you, Professor uh, Mandal, for actually playing the issues uh, that will, of course, uh, facilitate uh, discussions. Uh, opportunity and prospect for uh, open management for the fish because. Uh, in the fish, two thirds of the fish is thrown away, and we know actually we had done some uh, you know study in Bangladesh Human Fish Foundation, and but we found uh, that um, uh, two thirds of the offal has some commercial value, and they have the need frames, and if these are treated and uh, processed um, properly, it can also um, create value. So I think that this is one area where uh, we need to give attention, apart from increasing the production also, the offer itself, whether this is poultry or dairy or fish, I think we have huge potentials for increasing uh, this for some full um, uh, you know, uh, income and also generation of uh, employment. Um, uh, We are actually talking about investments. Only with the investments, we have enterprises who will generate employment. As such, our focus would be on how do we create an dynamic environment or a conducive environment for private sector investments in the country. In the recent years, so we have seen a lot of corporate houses in the country who have come forward to invest in agriculture and agroposition sector. Today we have with us three of them, namely ACI, Aragon, and Spahani. Actually, quite popular names in Bangladesh. They have their own friends. Let us see what they have to say on these issues related to existing investment climate and the ability to skill manpower based on their experiences in their respective fields. To invite first Dr. Ansari, Managing Director and CEO, ACI Agribusiness, to share his views. Dr. Ansari. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Honorable Chief Guest, Honorable Chair of the session, President CCI FB, uh, and the participant, good evening. Uh, Honorable keynote speaker precisely highlighted the subject and the focal point, and their presentation also gave broad-based outline. Reverse migration, eating out, getting haircut, boutique shop, hotel, restaurant, retail, local tourism, all of the affected and are the reason for the job card in this country. On a positive side, according to PPRC survey, the percentage of people at work in urban rose from 33 in April to 83 in June, while in rural, it rose from 50 to 84. That is already a good sign and the sign of improvement. Google Mobility data in August shows recovered over 80% mobility in the country. Since vaccine is yet to be found and infection is floating around, 
20%, they are a low attraction for the new investment. And looking for a new investment at this point will be very challenging. A different way of looking at this problem is there are opportunities for employment generation by adopting favorable strategy and utilizing the labor force effectively. Possible option for easy and immediate employment is by attracting and encouraging development of a small agri entrepreneur and employment agri in agri based industry. I'd like to highlight a few examples of focusing opportunity sector. There will be improved productivity and will also support SDG goal and generate employment. Service provider can also an option for driving employment. Service like tractor, power tiller, deep irrigation, harvester, transplanter, cedar, drones for pesticide and fertilizer, spray, post harvest, threshing, small storage, drying, cleaning, grading, cold chain, and transportation. Other opportunities include precision agriculture, vertical farming, structure and maintenance services, hydroponic and greenhouse farming that is already indicated by the key present entrepreneur and millions of employment as a driver, operator, mechanics and private parts, manufacturers and seller. Traditional food processing and packaging, chalachu, samacha, pakura, puff rice, Button rice, rice cakes, sweet chicken, and egg fries. All are could be all a food court. People lost confidence on street food, resulting in job loss in millions of vendors. Food courts and shops can be reached and established. channel is not easy for small entrepreneurs and the farmers. Agribusiness Foundation can be established like TKSF and SME Foundation. Uh, this will help small agri entrepreneur to access fund easily through the agribusiness companies. My special thanks and polite request to the Honorable Principal Secretary and Honorable Executive Chairman Bida for their kind attention and thanks to the France, Bangladesh Chamber and Commerce and Industry Thank you all. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you, Professor. Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Ansari, for your uh, quite eloquent uh, and comprehensive presentation. Uh, may I now hear Dr. Mushur, uh, Mr. Mushur Rahman, Managing Director of Paragon and President, Bangladesh Fit Industry Association. Uh, 
Mr. Mashur Rahman. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we know this uh, COVID-19 learned us a lot of uh, new thing. Uh, we know food safety and security is the uh, uh, important uh, thing uh, uh, always, but this COVID teach us more and more and consumer and we, everybody care for food safety and security. That's why people need to know about how and where this food came. Uh, presently, uh, demand is coming for QR code so knowing the situation and position where this food is coming from. And day by day, uh, everybody's thinking how to do it. And we uh, uh, precisely said that about the recycle of uh, poultry waste and uh, fish waste. Uh, this is not a very uh, big issue. Uh, we hope this uh, we are uh, uh, industry and government is working and we hope this point should be resolved very soon. This is a very important issue, waste recycle. And this, because of that environment will be more uh, defined and uh, industry can grow faster and environment will be more uh, actively clear. And, uh, and very much important to develop skill worker for this agriculture sector. Nowadays, the modern technology is coming. That's why we need uh, to develop our uh, people uh, who are working in this agriculture sector like uh, fisheries, dairy, and poultry. And the modern farming, we know that uh, we know that before our farming was like a uh, very small scale farm and fisheries and dairy and poultry, like 10, uh, 10 20 cows or like 100 and 200 uh, chicken is the one farm, but nowadays uh, farming is changing. Farm becoming now like uh, one in one farm, like uh, 15 lakh, 20, uh, 20 lakh chicken in one house, uh, rearing by like 50 people, uh, but very skilled people. So if we like to feed our country people in cheaper, like what we are doing last 10 years, if we, if we con uh, compare with 20 years back, the egg price, meat price, fish price, and milk price. Uh, if I, we compare present price, now is cheaper than before. Uh, if we compare like a, uh, other other uh, uh, other vegetable and uh, other food product is increased that much, but uh, this product not in, in, uh, increase price like that that way. If we continue our this thing, we will, we will, we will, and uh, uh, we can, uh, if we continue development of this sector in modern way, I think uh, 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 we can keep price cheaper and day by day we can work on traceability and hygiene in and modern, uh, and, and we know our uh, lifestyle is changing in supermarket and other uh, shop is, uh, people is changing the, uh, daily marketing stem uh, because of those reason this uh, uh, thing we need to change and we know the uh, in agriculture we are not sufficient in rice and fish we are third largest in the world so uh, and uh, fish and uh, poultry product uh, maybe very recently fish already we are exporting poultry product maybe we we, we can we can Achieving that level, we are trying to achieve in that level, we can export very soon. And we know dairy, dairy is a ban last two, three years from India, but uh, in Kurwani, we achieved none of Indian cows came, but Bangladeshi dairy farm, they achieved their cattle growing and uh, even last Kurwani also successfully we done and uh, price also getting down and uh, meat uh, quality also very much improving day by day. And we know in greenhouse, Bangladesh uh, in, a, a, uh, in food, in, in food uh, sector, uh, we are good in our country, there is, still, uh, there, there is some greenhouse already implement. And because of that, a lot of vegetable like uh, capsicum, uh, avocado, dra dragon fruit, uh, and, 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 and flower also going in, 
uh, greenhouse. So a lot of uh, thing is coming up and we know that because of COVID uh, in the agriculture sector, poultry sector, fisheries, uh, uh, it was down like 40% uh, first days. And slowly now already we achieved like uh, maybe now 10 percent uh, waiting for achieving the normal uh, normal scenario. We hope very soon we will be there because uh, food is like that. We need uh, uh, daily life, and that's why um, the demand and supply coming very fastly, and uh, especially. Uh, integration and uh, contact growing farming also improving very fast. Uh, before COVID, it was very, uh, very much uh, fastly. It was growing contact growing farm because of the contact growing farm uh, we was uh, doing. Because of that, uh, the traceability was also one of uh, important thing came. That's why integration farming also improving because of those reason. We need good how to do. Uh, the whole uh, country development, uh, whole countries uh, food for these four uh, fields, uh, like uh, product for consumer. Uh, we need skill development and we need uh, um, the already I told the waste recycle. Those things can help us to develop uh, very fast uh, to grow. Like uh, for poultry sector, we are we, we are suffering for like vaccine and other things. Those things also very important for us. Uh, I think if we can resolve those things, uh, our modern farming and integration farming can achieve in a level uh, can feed this country people uh, safe, uh, safe and safe product. Uh, because uh, if we uh, if if we can uh, achieve like this way, uh, uh, I hope the COVID nineteen already uh, we all, all sector and if we can achieve those things, I think uh, this sector uh, very fast uh, it will go. Before COVID nineteen last uh, fifteen years, I can say this sector was improved like fifteen percent average fifteen percent last fifteen years. And now uh, already demand is not improving that there, but very soon we can again start uh, develop uh, the same way what we did. And I hope that this thing can uh, make a good achievement for our poultry uh, fisheries and dairy sector. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Monsieur, um, for your presentation. I think this is one of the very important aspects uh, that we'll have to see. How do we establish linkage between primary production and processing? And one way is, of course, um, um, the contract farming. And another is cluster farming, especially for the very small farms. And in order to integrate the contract farming or cluster farming. You know, cluster farming is also one option, especially for the shrimp sector. I think that should be the uh, our, that should um, uh, deserve our um, topmost attention. So anyway, thank you very much, Mushir, for your uh, presentation. Now uh, let me invite uh, Ms. Fauzi Aspin, uh, Director Spani Agri Limited, to share her views. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sir, uh, honorable chief guest, uh, honorable keynote uh, speaker, participants, and uh, friends, Bangladesh Chamber. Thank you for giving me opportunity to share my views. I would say this is much needed topic uh, uh, to give attention at this moment. COVID-19 has revealed the systemic flaws, the challenges, and the emerging opportunity in the agriculture value chain of our country. Uh, blended financial facilities combined with capacity building services and connectivity strengthen is at the core of uh, COVID-19 response. The three Cs, capital, uh, capacity, and connectivity can be our approach to deal with the challenges and utilize the opportunity of entrepreneurship and employment in agro-based industry. 
these C's are firstly capital, access to affordable source of capital, uh, financial capital is, is most important. Secondly, capacity, developing both technical and business capacity. And lastly, connectivity, to ensure market linkage and connectivity uh, in the value chain. I like to focus on some of the priority areas to address the challenges and opportunities. We need to work on developing models uh, to address missing links of agricultural value chain. The models may uh, factor in demand and supply synchronization. We often suffer uh, for this information gap. Then regional agricultural coordination among the key players Stories provision farm, for farmers produces forward market linkages. A strong supply chain will create entrepreneurship and job opportunity in every step of developed supply chain. Uh, secondly, capacity building. The livelihood of smallhold farmer and SMEs like uh, dealer, retailer are suffering the most. Knowledge gap is the uh, uh, key constraint of agricultural value chain. Developing capacities of SMEs, producers, contract farmers, and rural youth will create employment opportunity. The presentation uh, given by BIDA, actually, uh, this is very encouraging. They are uh, training lots of lots of educated uh, uh, young stars to the future leaders. Exploring export markets, we need to synchronize us with global supply chain. Our objective is to generate higher income. Increasing yield may not be the only way to raise productivity. Increasing high value and safe crop production needed to be identified with required technology. It works uh, in two ways. Firstly, it uh, uh, feed our population in the country as well as in the surplus crop. We know the, uh, that Bangladesh is the third largest rice producer in the world. Not only in rice, we are in the top list of world production for many crops like vegetable, potato, mango. But where are we in export market? We have to be ready for that. From policy level, we need to focus on safe food production and maintain safe uh, supply chain accordingly. I'm not uh, covering that area, as Dr. Saleh is going to talk about on this topic. Uh, there are a scope in developing our agro-processing industry. Investment in agro-processing industry can open up number of income generation activities and create scope for agro-based employees, income so generation activities, and create scope for uh, Today's vibrant vegetable sector of Bangladesh is the largely outcome of private sector's R&D. But still, we are largely depending on outsourcing, uh, overseas seed, and other inputs. COVID-19 showed us import uncertainty now and in near future. This hints that uh, we must invest on local seed R&D and production scale up to ensure consistent supply of quality seed. This will increase uh, seed processing activities as well, uh, means scope for women empowerment. Integrate uh, ICT for digital empowerment. And uh, I'm sure uh, regarding ICT, we'll be talking more. And just uh, what to focus is COVID-19 shows us the power of ICT. Agriculture sector also have to be synced with digital. The city has various dimensions to add value. We we should it we will have to utilize that. We have to invest in ICT. And uh, I wanted to say about the. Uh, 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 a training for the future leader, but that already BIDA, I have seen the uh, mission of BIDA, so I'm very hopeful about that. Thank you for your patience here. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you, Fozia, uh, for sharing your views, and I think you have touched very important points, and especially with regard to um, food safety, etc. Our subsequent uh, discussions will be 
talk on those. And now at this stage, I, I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Eric Rezol, um, uh, Director of Business France for South Asia, covering India, Bangladesh, and Sri Lanka. He's also working as a and investment commissioner in French Embassy in Delhi. He's joining us from Delhi itself. Uh, he'll be talking about Bangladesh France partnership in agriculture and agroprocessing. Mr. Eric. Hi, uh, hi, Mr. President, dear Mahmoud, thank you for the inviting us, inviting Business France, the government agency from France for promoting uh, French uh, exports and uh, investment. So I would like to share a short presentation uh, that we'll just do now. Just one minute. So a short presentation about uh, about France and agriculture and uh, France Bangladesh partnership. So just to remind uh, everyone uh, that France is the uh, first agricultural power in in Europe and the second in agri food in uh, in Europe as well. Sixty percent now of the uh, surface of agriculture and organic farming. That is a big evolution in the recent years. And we are the third uh, agro equipment uh, uh, in Europe. Uh, the fourth global exporter and being the first in a global uh, exporting of, uh, of wine. That's the main uh, key figures that uh, is uh, showing our, our powerful power is our agriculture and agribusiness in France. The second I wanted to show is how innovative uh, it's the French agriculture and the French agro sector, uh, being the first country also in Europe as a, with the number of uh, food tech. We have institutes uh, in many, many fields of agriculture that are working with uh, uh, cooperation with uh, many countries outside France. Uh, I was listening to other other speakers talking about seeds, but talking also about other products. So we have this bilateral cooperation into the research uh, in many countries around the world and in this region. And the French startup uh, are very also uh, interesting. Uh, we have a lot of uh, food tech and agro tech uh, startup. Uh, we are working for new technology and new solution for the agriculture. So just before talking and having said that how powerful is, is our agriculture, the COVID uh, also had a big effect on our agriculture. But um, with the, the agriculture, in France and uh, the government is, uh, is uh, a recovery plan to help all the small and medium-sized French companies to recover from the crisis of COVID-19. At the beginning, it was very funny because when the lockdown happened in France, everybody was using a lot of, because they were locked inside their house, so they were using a lot of butter, flour and everything to cook in their house. And it was short, some shortage of uh, of uh, food in the French stores. But after one month, uh, it was more difficult for the agriculture. The other thing that we saw also during COVID that many people in cities, in big cities, they just wanted to leave those big cities and to be in a countryside. So now what we are seeing after the lockdown is a lot of citizens of uh, French cities are buying properties and they want to live outside the big city. That is a very social and interesting move uh, that is uh, happening in Europe now. And I think this will be uh, followed by other moves of uh, people going back to the countryside, having their own products, their own farm, their own, uh, I mean, poultry and so on. So that's, a very interesting what is the big change we have in the society and it's linked with the agriculture 
according to uh, what we can do uh, between France and, and Bangladesh in the agro-based industry, what I wanted to show is how some French company were already active in South Asia or in India, where I am based with our office here, covering India, Bangladesh and Sri Lanka, how those companies could also be helpful uh, to develop the bilateral trade. We are importing a lot of goods and mat raw material from Bangladesh, as you can see on that, uh, on that chart. We are importing uh, $3.3 .3 billion uh, from Bangladesh, and we export only uh, $300 million to Bangladesh. And the agricultural products are, are not very, very big. I mean, it's uh, some uh, products, 8 million uh, euro, pest and agrochemical, and industrial equipment by 69 million euro. So as you see, our bilateral trade is very in favor of Bangladesh. You are exporting much more to France than we are in exporting to your country. But that part of agri-products agri and agro-material could be more important and we could have more uh, partnership thanks to the company who are already in, uh, in the region. Sorry. Sorry, Mike. Can you hear me? So we have put some example of French company. Sorry. So how we can develop this? It's by making a France a partner in agriculture. Those companies, maybe you know some of them. Seva, who is already represented in in Bangladesh, but we have Limagran, who is very very spread here in India. Uh, for seeds. Uh, we have a lot of uh, company also uh, into the machinery uh, for uh, the different uh, agro, agro industry. We have also some key uh, processing equipment that we can uh, to, entry to modernize some uh, equipment and some facilities and some plants in very sector. I don't have much time to develop this, but uh, I will share my presentation. So you, we have made a selection of companies that are already here and want to develop business uh, around here in the region. So it's uh, also in the food processing. As you see, we are all the ingredient nutrition industry, all the, all the uh, I mean, equipment for, for agro food processing. And trainings and consulting, as I said, we can be openness into the research, into the training and consultancy. Uh, our team is uh, has a, a bilateral agreement with the chamber, the France Bangladesh chamber. So we have four people in charge of agriculture here in India and we liaise with the, the chamber to assist any uh, Bangladesh company who wants to work with France we can provide you some free uh, consultancy work to uh, try to get some support for you to buy from French company. Thank you very much for this opportunity. I hope I can fly. I just arrived in India one month ago, uh, and I hope I can fly to Dhaka visit all of you. Thank you. Um, uh, thank you. Thank you, Eric. As we discussed, actually, I also conveyed this to our honorable chairman, Executive Chairman um, uh, Bida, uh, that um, as soon as the you know the flight uh, connections destroyed between India and Bangladesh, um, you are planning to uh, come over to Bangladesh towards the end of December, and maybe at that time we'll have more more, more opportunity to discuss about your uh, uh, I mean the, the bilateral opportunities uh, for investment in Bangladesh from French side, also showcasing the uh, French technologies. So we look forward uh, to your coming with your colleagues in Bangladesh, and uh, you're most welcome. We're wait, waiting for that. Thank you, Eric. Thank you everybody for uh, participating in our uh, today's event. Thank you. So, as you know, when we try to increase uh, the productivity and output in agriculture, we'll have to take care of how the production processes, especially the use of inputs and their concomitant residues impact human health and environment. 
let us hear Dr. Mahmoud Saleh Ahmad, Chairman Carnell Foundation and former consultant World Bank NFO on this issue. Dr. Saleh Ahmad. Assalamu alaikum. Good evening. Respected Chairman, Honorable Chief Guest, Moderator, Keynote Speaker, Panelist, and other guests. I am going to focus on some emerging issues relating to improvement of quality and safety of agro products. In Bangladesh, current production and processing of agro commodities pose risk to human health and environment, which calls for increasing attention to improve quality and safety of agro products. Generally, our local consumers are losing their trust on the quality of food products. Low quality products are creating export market access barriers, particularly European Union and other food importing countries. Ladies and gentlemen, at the production level, soil contains heavy metal. Water used in the farm frequently polluted imbalance use of inputs, particularly the chemical fertilizers, pose a serious threat on soil and water. The evidences of indiscriminate and overuse pesticide fertilizers, plant growth regulators, antibiotics, veterinary drugs, and adulterations that make the products unsafe through their residual effect on human health, ecology, and the environment. Problems of product safety do not, however, stop at the farm only. Poor post-harvest handling practices provide major impact on product safety. Low quality packaging materials and dirty vehicles introduce physical and microbial contaminations. Poor storage and transportation practices deteriorate the produce quality and reduce its shelf life. Farmers and other value chain actors rarely undertake actions to improve quality and safety, as well as to protect the environmental pollution. So uh, implementing food safety assurance measures with the application of good practices good agricultural practices for crops, good aquacultural practices for fisheries, and good veterinary practices for animals that enhance the produce safety and quality. Those are environmentally sound and ensure appropriate handling, storage, and shipping of the products. When these are appropriately applied to the farm, consumers can be assured that the product is safe. Then what are the uh, good practices in processing? The quality and safety of products intended for processing can be ensured by applying good manufacturing practices, good hygienic practices, and HACCP to food processing. When properly applied, these measures ensure quality and safety for all the processing steps from the receipt of the raw material to the shipping and marketing of the final products. Implementation of good hygienic practice entails the use of appropriate sanitary measures to prevent microbial contaminations and give assurance of optimum sanitary conditions for processing food products. HACCP is, is a system to apply for intensification of safety control procedures during processing. <clears throat> so the issue of traceability has already discussed, uh, uh, pointed out by one of our panelists, which is a mandatory issue for export in supermarket, in particularly in EU and other developed countries. That should be in place to verify the history of applying practices 
by means of documented recorded evidence. Only in our aquaculture in Bangladesh, through, uh, through, through the cooperation of EU countries, a lot of progress has been made, but addressing in the crop sectors, it is lagging behind. Very recently, our Ministry of Agriculture has drafted the guidelines for implementation of food agricultural practice in the Bangladesh. So it is the need of our to develop food standard and certification system, making it intervention through providing support for physical infrastructure, establishment of accredited laboratory, assisting for capacity building of officers, farmers, exporters, and industry people and other stakeholders to strengthen the process for implementation of good practices, updating sector-wise food control laws and regulation, strengthening inspection and monitoring quality standard development and certification practices, and establishing a traceability system in place, particularly for exporting in supermarket. The priority focus need to be made for improving on farm food safety issues to ensure fresh produce safety for direct consumption and to supply safe raw material for processing and value addition. If raw materials are contaminated by any means in the farm, that cannot be eliminated during processing. So adoption of on-farm food safety program can help producers to reduce the food safety risk and expert its market share. Hence, priority attention needs to be given to sector-wise, I mean crop, fisheries, and livestock for on-farm food safety program. In Bangladesh, product-related regulations and standards are not updated. And whatever regulations are available, most of them are not harmonized with international standards. So <clears throat> capacity building of farmers and other value chain actors should be given priority attention. A coordinative initiative must be in place to advocate and assist in developing risk-based, sustainable, and integrated food safety system in the country that will help to build trust on the quality of our agro products and also Take the way to boost our export. BIDA can take the lead through Bangladesh Food Safety Authority. They can make an initiative to go forward through making required interventions for improving our food control system in Bangladesh. Thank you all for patient sharing. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sir. Thank you for your very comprehensive a presentation on food safety and in different aspects of food safety as well. So now it's time for Dr. Asif Naimur Rashid. He's the Chief Information Officer of OBX Theatre Limited. He will be talking on possible applications of artificial intelligence and information technology in agriculture and Roby's initiative for supporting the entrepreneurship and startup. Dr. Asif. Thank you and assalamu and warm welcome to the honorable elite people in this call today and to the great audience listening to us online. Uh, you know, I was listening to the wonderful and information rich discussions and I was really wondering how I can add proper value to, to complement uh, all of them. Nevertheless, uh, as time is short, let me see if I can get directly to my points and talk a little bit on how technology as a whole, uh, specifically AI and IoT can build a tag team in digitally transforming our agro industry, you know, where technology is cutting edge, or harvesting sees the best productivity, you know, crop yield is maximum. And finally, with all of that, we are able to practice what we call green precision agriculture. Now, as I speak, uh, I take note of some of the statistics, you know, that the world will need to produce a staggering 50% more food by the year 2050. You know, an AI enabled IoT devices in the agro industry will reach 75 million in this year, 2020, and are growing at a rate of 20% per year. 
you know, the global smart agro market size is expected to triple by 2025, you know, reaching to a, you know, a humongous $15 billion. That's, that's big. Now, I just used the term precision agriculture a while ago, and we all know what it means, but in, in, in terms of technology, you know, it's a state when farming shifts to a special mode of cultivation that ensures higher crop yield and a better quality harvest, you know, using less. So in terms uh, of, you know, in, in corporate world, we, we, we say that doing more with less, that's what precision agriculture is all about. Now, how does the use of technology in available today can really help the agropreneurs, uh, if I may use that term, as well, well as the large agro industries to take advantage of it. You know, now let's talk about artificial intelligence first. You know, and let's make no mistake that AI still doesn't stand a chance when it comes to you know uh, comparison with the overall human brain. The complex neural network that we have, AI is no match for that. But when it comes to a specific knowledge generative area like agriculture and taking into consideration the amount of data and analytics available on the internet and in private. It is not possible for a human brain to process the billions of records all over the world in a fraction of a minute and use the best reference to match with a sample in hand to get the best possible advice. And exactly here, AI rules supreme. Now, how does it work? Well, at the core of AI, is it self-learning algorithms and models sitting right on top of mega computing processing units to analyze the patterns and trends and come up with the most accurate data-driven recommendations. You know, AI can help detect diseases in plants, detect pest attacks, and if the plants are suffering from poor nutrition. You know, advanced countries are trialing AI-enabled self-driving tractors for large fields. Now, smart power tillers can have an even smarter AI chief in its controller to ensure a better plowing quality. You know, AI-based image processing can test our soils and tell us what's right or wrong about it. You know, drones, you know, might still sound fancy to some of us, but there are a number of developing countries today, they're using drones, you know, coupled with the satellite images to capture vital field statistics and help farmers with important insights. Now, while using machine learning algorithms on these images captured, artificial intelligence can simply add the other variables like temperature, you know, precipitation, now you wind speed, maybe solar radiation to predict the best actions to be taken for maximum results. So now, if we see that how IoT can augment this agro industry, which we just discussed, can be augmented with the help of AI. Now we need to remember that IoT or Internet of Things is essentially dependent on data connectivity and a control system with a closed looped AI enabled backbone. And this is exactly where mobile operators like Rovi Asiata and others and all the wireless broadband providers can chip in. You know, IoT not only senses data, it offers precise actionable insights to the farmers or to the value chain partners and even sometimes can take actions without any human interventions by just automatically adjusting to the conditions through the smart machines. Now with a strong IoT player together with this AI ML technologies we just discussed, use of IoT can be even more versatile. You know, IoT smart farming sensors that we typically talk about that can range from you know, light and heat sensors, humidity sensors, temperature sensors, soil moisture and crop health sensors, greenhouse sensors. These all can help us implement a technology enabled green precision agriculture. And with the large scale use of IoT plus AI, we can even dream of automating the entire irrigation system in the country. I mean, why not? It's doable. Now, talking about technologies, you have to talk about some of the practical challenges. You know, and, you know IoT or use of AI enabled smart machines can be initially capital intensive. Though if we calculate three to five year TC or total cost of ownership, probably the cost would be lower, but the initial cost could be a barrier for our marginal farmers. If they try this technology alone, it could be a recipe for disaster. They need, to, they need support. You know, they need support to club them together, 
to handhold them for initial phases with the right set of policies and adequate funding. Now, the good news is sensors and devices are getting cheaper every day. You know, look around the world. You know, there were once in you know, a $100 sensor today it can just cost you 20 to 35, you know, $35. And the price could get even few dollars by the end of next year. This is wonderful news for all of us. And the AI-based analytics today are largely hosted on the cloud. You know, you can just get it as a software, as a service, and you know, on a subscription model, which is low cost, and you know, how easy it can get. So I think I, I don't quite believe that the use of technology will negatively impact the labor market in the long run. You know, almost a billion jobs could be lost worldwide to automation by 2030. But there are potentials that another billion new jobs will be created in the process. In Bangladesh, we would need many skilled people, you know, especially around, you know, we can talk about the IOC sensor industry itself. We can talk about the manufacturing industry where you need to really build the smart machines in here in Bangladesh. And we need to train the surplus resources, upskill them, and offer them opportunities to shine in another sector. And that's how we need to proceed. Thank you very much. Uh, th thank you, Asif, for you know just enlightening us on these uh, very important upcoming issues. Especially when we talk only not it's only for IR, it's on fourth agriculture. So this is we're all centering into fourth agriculture evolution. Uh, thank you very much for your. Um, uh, presentation and I think um, we need to remain engaged uh, in the days to come so that we can take advantage of what you are saying in a more appropriate and structured manner. Uh, now we have uh, come to the most important aspect of financing the agriculture, especially the startups, micro entrepreneurs, and those who offer for self employment in agriculture in its entire spectrum covering crop, aquaculture, horticulture, floriculture, dairy, and poultry. Also, we need to see how do we ensure the access to finance and thereby the technology for small and marginal farmers. This is where we'd like to hear Mamad Ashtaful Alam, Country Project Coordinator, Shaping Inclusive Finance Transformation, United Nations Capital Development Fund. Mr. Ashraf. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair, Executive Chairman of Bangladesh Investment Development Authority, Honorable Chief Guest, Honorable Principal Secretary, Prime Minister's Office, uh, Keynote Speaker, Dr. Sattar Mandal and uh, Mr. A.K.M. Hafizullah Khan, fellow panelists and participants and viewers, good evening. Uh, as uh, we have, uh, we are listening to the deliberation of uh, keynotes and the uh, panelists, we can clearly see that uh, the, I mean, speakers have outlined the possibility frontier for uh, agriculture sector for augmenting the growth, uh, growth of Bangladesh. So whatever we want to do uh, we, in, in expanding agricultural productivity or also to, uh, to increase employment and entrepreneurship in this sector, we need financing. So financing or access to finance is one of the key uh, constraints uh, frequently mentioned by the entrepreneurs as well as the farmers uh, all over the world. So let us uh, see that, I mean, uh, as, I, as, as I can recall that uh, this also mentioned by uh, Ms. Fauzia Khan uh, around the capital connectivity and capacity. Capital is one of the key, uh, key things. So first, I will basically outline whatever is available uh, financing opportunities in Bangladesh for agricultural sector. And then basically I will uh, focus on the what can, uh, what can be done uh, further to accelerate the access to finance. Government of Bangladesh has uh, basically, I would say, uh, uh, arranged a, I mean, wonderful uh, facilities for financing agriculture, agro-business and agro-based uh, processing industries uh, through uh, fiscal measures as well as monetary measures. So I will focus on the monetary measures or the in, uh, instrument or tools or the facilities being uh, 
provided by the provided by the bangladesh bank the central bank so bangladesh bank uh, has a uh, specific department agricultural credit department and this department annually every year they publish a annual credit agricultural credit policy which basically specifies uh, the modalities of agricultural financing bangladesh bank also has mandated all the banks all the banks including the foreign banks uh, that they have to provide 2.5% of their portfolio to the agricultural sector and also there are interest rate cap for agricultural financing and bangladesh has at least uh, five specific refinance window uh, to the tune of around 10 more than 10 billion uh, bangladeshi taka for financing agro agro business agri based uh, processing industries bangladesh bank has established one specific refinance window for uh, financing small and uh, marginal farmers uh, with the support from jica and another another refinance window for milk processing and artificial insemination and also uh, through the, the there are other refinance windows uh, established by bangladesh bank also recently bangladesh bank has established one credit guarantee scheme which also covers the agro processing and agri business uh, entrepreneurs the other uh, arrangement for financing agriculture is the through the mfi channel and as as we all know that pksf is one of the one of the biggest uh, funder of the mfi industry in bangladesh pksf is also providing support to the mfi for financing agriculture agri business and agro processing mm. industries in the small scale though in the rural areas of bangladesh so smart large mfis like brac is asha they are also providing agricultural financing with, in partnership with the uh, with the commercial banks in the private sector the, there has been although very few cloud investment uh, uh, startup has been in bangladesh and also recently bangladesh government under the ict division they have established one uh, venture capital firm startup bangladesh which will also provide funding to the agri tech and agri business uh, startups so what we can see that there are ample uh, i mean uh, uh, infrastructure and facilities established by the government but the challenge is as uh, dr satyan mondal has in his uh, i mean preliminary deliberation has shown that the banking system is not in sync with the uh, entrepreneurial need uh, when and how much they will need to finance and also understanding the agriculture agri business and agro agro processing industries so we need to synchronize the public sector and fiscal uh, arrangements with the private sector need also we should explore alternate financing model like platform based cloud investment and lending and also uh, we should also um, attract fdi as the french uh, 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 person who presented uh, eric fazole uh, he said that there is opportunity for joint venture between the uh, i mean french and bangladeshi in investors as well as we can explore other countries as well and also using blended finance uh, through the development partners and uh, following the other in important area uh, miss miss fozia also mentioned that information is one of the key uh, requirements for the farmers and entrepreneurs so promoting ict based startups to make information available to the entrepreneurs and uh, farmers and uh, another another important uh, financing te uh, technique can be is the uh, through corporate or non bank financing model corporate farms led financing which dr uh, um, um, ansari has mentioned i i would say bangladesh bangladesh should explore that the providing opportunities to these corporate uh, farms for uh, for raising capital to fin uh, finance their uh, uh, clients through these basically this will be helpful for financing seed technology and other areas and also uh, like p2p crowdfunding digital marketplace receivable and supply chain financing which is basically done through the corporate farms this needs to be promoted uh, from the government uh, government as well as from the bangladesh bank uh, bank side so that will basically provide a comprehensive financing platform as we were talking about precision agriculture 
so uh, basically our financing mechanism should be precision as well uh, use of technology in uh, doing financing and connecting the farmers as well as agri business and agro entrepreneurs into the broader digital digital platforms will facilitate low cost financing to the farmers and agri entrepreneurs and this way basically if we can establish a digital yeah, financial platform that will help us to achieve the agro entrepreneurship as well as create more uh, on employment in the agricultural sector and also uh, accelerate the growth of agricultural uh, agriculture sector thank you very much uh, thank you asha thank you we have touched on very very important aspects of financing agriculture so uh, actually uh, um, our chief guest will have to leave at 9 o'clock uh, so um uh, now i would uh, actually request uh, dr mahfuz uh, advisor uh, former advisor and chief uh, rural development food security adb uh, to share his views on these issues um so i'd like to request dr mahfuz to precise so that we can give the floor uh, to honorable principal secretary or chief guest dr mahfuz thank you sir mamul and um, honorable principal secretary uh, the chair of beda and everybody good evening uh, i think after he listening to a very rich uh, presentation and discussion uh, i think there is very little i can add to the discussion at this point so uh, in order to save time i will also speak less maybe i will focus on some of the enablers at this point and then well, i'm very eager to hear uh, from dr ahmed kaikawas Uh, he is not only the, uh, the overseer of the national policies plans and their execution across sectors he is also a scholar on agriculture and food policy and i believe he is also a strong champion of the sector so i also had the opportunity to meet with him early this year and we touched on few of the issues that have been highlighted in this uh, meeting so but uh, as a hands i think i'm going to speak less but uh, nonetheless uh, that meeting was before covid uh, they they the topic is still relevant and much more relevant in post covid so first let me just quickly uh, cap uh, recap on the macro where before covid we had 8.2% growth in 2020 and is going to shrink definitely but you need an economic recovery that requires diversification of the economy before covid already food processing industry was identified as one of the next economic engines for growth and two studies i saw one in jaka in 2018 and by usaid 2019 it confirmed this prospect for food processing industry and transformation in the agri industry value chain and infusion of knowledge and technology were at the core of this new trajectory so i think it's quite important to know that uh, agriculture the significance of agriculture is underscored by the covid and a diversified and resilient food and agriculture system as a protection against uh, poverty hunger as well as economic recovery and growth is already like uh, i don't have to repeat it what i want to say is that uh, bangladesh had about 900 million dollar worth of export in agriculture and fisheries commodities this could be brought and raised to almost 3 to 5 uh, in next 3 to 5 years so for this i think i would like to suggest few things one is Uh, we need to uh, prioritize the agro processing and uh, export diversification by creating um, production and processing zones for important agriculture and aquaculture export products through special planning and mapping second we need the to correct the existing mismatch and complexities of regular regulatory policies and importing raw materials and equipment for agro industries we need to attract further domestic and foreign corporate investment in primary production and processing and value addition and finally i think we need to create platform for public private cooperation in uh, branding and marketing of agri products including uh, issues of tbt or uh, technical barrier to trade now i think one fundamental point that has been touched up on through all this transforming agriculture and all this uh, digital agriculture is the education training and r and d uh, so let's see what the government plan had the government actually emphasizes in this 2021 vision um, the knowledge based society education is the most important pillar of that vision and promoting domestic 
uh, research and innovation and facilitating knowledge application in sector like agriculture are at the core of that education policy. So government priorities are there. It prioritizes tertiary education that can lead the economy to a new growth trajectory and where agriculture could be prime uh, source of high growth. So under the government counter cyclical expenditure plan addressing COVID pandemic and supporting vulnerable people in informal sector like agriculture is part of the strategy. So I think there is no uh, kind of doubt that the government has actually a, a, a positive uh, approach toward it. But now if you look at the reality, the reality is that we have only few limited agropreneurs and most of the smallholders are still in traditional resource intensive agriculture. They are doing very well, but it's only pushing the physical inputs and lever. So I think we need to create a knowledge based agriculture, which is where the precision agriculture and those agriculture are heading. Now tertiary education is actually is fundamental. That education could not unfortunately produce high level technological and entrepreneurial transformation. The curriculum and the academic program are outpaced uh, by technological changes in the industry. Internship, idea competition have not been mainstream. R&D and its linkage to the agro industry remain very weak and limited. So I think what should we do? I think we need to do two things. One is we must take a proactive step to invest in diploma and vocational education. And the second is we need to revamp agricultural tertiary education and curricula and pedagogy uh, to promote academia and agriculture uh, industry partnership and R&D and internship, incubation and upstreaming of, upscaling of uh, startup programs. Finally, I think just one point I want to make is that, I mean, uh, we need to have a smart integration through knowledge. At the end of the day, the key to success is how smartly, vigorously, or rapidly you combine knowledge, know-how, and human capital. So I think that is what we need to emphasize, which is part of this four, uh, so-called agriculture fourization. Agriculture fourization means modernization, digitization, mechanization, all of these things. So I think at the end of the day, we need to invest in digital agriculture and internet plus and rural infrastructure and communication to boost the knowledge intensity and efficiency in production, processing and delivery of social, financial and technical services to the rural areas. And then finally, I think we also need to be careful. We need to manage some of the disparities and gaps across value chains and crop commodities, geographical ecosystem and gender and so on so as we move towards smart agriculture. I think these are a few points I would like to share. Uh, I better leave now and uh, give the, the floor to Honorable uh, Principal Secretary. Thank you, Sir Mahmoudullah. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mahfuz, uh, for kindly highlighting that how do we create high-tech agropreneurs through education and skill development. So uh, before I hand over the floor to our Chief Guest, Dr. Ahmed Gaikos, Honorable Principal Secretary, Prime Minister Office, I'd like to express my sincere thanks for kindly consenting uh, to be the chief guest at our today's webinar. Uh, also, let me take this opportunity to just briefly uh, give an introduction of Dr. Kai Kwas. He joined the Prime Minister's office as the Principal Secretary on 29 December 2019 after serving as the Senior Secretary, Power Division, Minister of Power and Mineral Resources. Prior to joining the Power Division, he worked for three years as the Deputy Chief of Party of the Policy Research and Strategy Support Program, a US-funded project at the International Food Policy Research Institute. Dr. Kai Kos received his Master's of Arts degree in Development Economics from the Center for Development Economics, Williams College, Massachusetts, USA, and PhD in Public Policy and Political Economy from the University of Texas at Dallas, Texas, USA. Uh, with this brief introduction, I'd like to invite our chair, uh, chief guest to make his kind presentation. Well, thank you so much. I'm sorry I was trying to uh, be smart on my computer, but I found that I made a mess uh, with my uh, ear pads. So um, I have to come back to... Uh, Traditional means. I hope you are hearing me. Is that all right? Yes, yes, yes. we are all okay, here. Thank you. Um, first of all, thank you. I uh, sincerely thank the French Bangladesh Chamber 
Commerce and Industries for uh, inviting me and giving me the opportunity to say a few words. And uh, as Dr. Mahfuz, uh, by the way, he was also my teacher, um, has mentioned, uh, I don't find anything left. Only uh, thing I was thinking, how can I leave uh, with this uh, August get, you know, um, gathering and also uh, so much, so many experts. Probably whatever I'm going to say uh, is going to make them unhappy. Uh, I see that uh, there's a whole range of people with a lot of expertise and a lot of uh, visions and also uh, practical experiences. So I think uh, it's a huge, uh, for me, it was a huge uh, learning session. Um, let me start with, as we are focusing on the pandemic, let me start uh, with the global pandemic that we are going through. Uh, I, as you all are aware that we are going to uh, undergo, uh, you know, we are facing this global pandemic, which is called COVID-19. In my opinion, uh, maybe I'm going to be uh, criticized a lot, but uh, we have uh, overreacted, in my opinion, in a sense that uh, we have stalled the whole world in many countries, uh, which uh, we did not follow completely in Bangladesh. Uh, so uh, I, uh, we cannot claim yet that we are successful, but uh, we were not scared. We tried to deal with this. And uh, so far, the statistics are quite uh, not so scary in case of Bangladesh. Uh, I was looking into the global pandemics uh, that we had in the history during uh, this century and the previous centuries. And the last one, uh, as you know, was the Spanish flu. And then we had SARS, which had AI, HIV, uh, AIDS, and all of them uh, basically uh, took a lot of lives, uh, and uh, which is, to say, you know, in, in case of the Spanish flu, the um, claim was that it was around 50 million. Uh, but we don't have 50 million uh, in fact, so far, and I think uh, before that, we shall be able to find out uh, a vaccine. Why am, am I saying this? Because uh, too much information sometimes makes us, you know, too nervous. And another uh, issue that has been proved uh, that we live in a very uh, tightly global, globalized world. That means uh, we are intertwined uh, in terms of culture, in terms of uh, activities, in terms of trade, in terms of industries. And uh, one of my favorite uh, pictures uh, is the Boeing. If you see a Boeing, that's a US product, right? The US company. When you take the parts uh, apart or you uh, desegregate the parts, you will find the whole world. So many parts are coming from many parts of the uh, world or many countries. So that is the indication of globalization. So that means uh, if China is infected, and uh, as we, all of us know it very well, that the outbreak uh, started in China. And if you look into the number, one of the lowest is in China. Why did it happen? Because China is also the global center of global connectivity uh, in terms of uh, trade and others. So uh, it can supply you products, it can also supply you virus. All of us, it's not only China, everybody. 
So this is the uh, strength of globalization. This is also the weakness of the globalization. And I don't think that, that this is the weakness of the globalization because um, as the presenter in the beginning, uh, I'm sorry, I uh, did not address anyone because uh, it's, uh, I always consider that this is uh, not the best utilization of time. So um, please consider that every protocol is observed. So um, as the present, uh, I mean, the uh, first presenter has pointed out that, uh, um, you know, um, there is a lot of uh, reduction in activities or uh, loss of uh, businesses. But I think someone has already mentioned about the strength of digitization. Because digital world has emerged and proved that we can basically survive and also uh, more strongly connected uh, under this globalization. And our activities can be strengthened. Uh, as you, we have witnessed in case of Bangladesh, uh, service industry uh, quickly uh, recovered using the uh, our uh, digital strength. Uh, you see, um, there are, say, uh, in economics that we, when we calculate GDP, we take the service industry, uh, service sector, uh, manufacturing sector, and agriculture sector. All these sectors has a value chain. Now, say service sector, uh, I'm running a uh, restaurant. What is uh, the basic activities there? Is the, I'm uh, cooking some food and uh, people are coming. Well, because of COVID-19, the restaurant is closed. But in case of Dhaka and many other uh, places in Bangladesh, it's not the uh, Fra France that we are talking about, it's in Bangladesh. You know, quickly, because of the digital platform, the kitchen <clears throat> is at your doorstep. So you see, this is the innovation that we are talking about. And, you know, the I, I must thank uh, COVID-19. Oh, well, I hate COVID-19 because it has created the globalization, I mean, uh, global uh, havoc, but it has also shown the strengths of digitization, strength of value uh, uh, chain, is strength of uh, value addition, and also uh, the strength of connectivity. So we can actually recover uh, whatever we are talking about are the uh, weaknesses that we are talking about. So I think, uh, you know, this has made a great uh, contribution even to Bangladesh. Let me give you one example of uh, uh, our last uh, uh, Kurbani, uh, you know, what I did is that I uh, sent someone, actually not, uh, I never met or uh, saw the cow. I saw the cow over, you know, digital platform, bought it, and, you know, well, we made a deal. They slaughtered it on my behalf. They took the names, and then they also sent the, uh, 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 the meat at my home. And well, I sent one guy, uh, my driver, to the place, and he told me that well, this this was excellent because uh, everything was clean, and there were like 10, 20, uh, I mean 20, 25 people, uh, those who uh, were uh, professional, you know, uh, slaughterers, and they did in one uh, hour, and everything uh, uh, was done in uh, one and a half hours, and then they were ready to pick up the meat. You see, that has developed in Bangladesh, and I think I'm not going to go for slaughtering uh, 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 next time in my home because it is making uh, you know dirty and it's also uh, uh, you know uh, becoming a threat to the environment. So you see, this pandemic has also given us a lot of avenues. That is what we want to tap in, and what the government is doing in this case, as you know. Our government has already declared 21 packages. Uh, a lot of things are coming up in, uh, I mean, a lot of uh, 
issues that you have mentioned that you know financing and others are the issues that we have already identified those and we have already uh, taken care of uh, recently the honorable prime minister has also in, you know uh, uh, approved a package where usually the uh, financing smes where you know and also the uh, in agriculture they are facing some problems of the uh, credit because they were not getting the credit and the bankers are not willing to give them credit because they don't have enough collateral you know the standard model so what we are doing here is that if you give them a uh, credit a loan the government will basically uh, ensure it so we are going to give uh, going to give them collateral from the government so uh, the ministry of finance has already uh, approved a package through which we are supporting you know uh, <clears throat> the specialized banks as well as the uh, krishi banks and as well as the pksf uh, you know there are uh, other banks as well which is called kolli Kormo shahab foundation and then uh, sme foundation we also have this sorry karma shangstan bank and uh, probashi kullan bank everywhere we are basically uh, through them we are trying to provide uh, credit and the government is taking uh, responsibility so and then uh, 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 last week honorable prime minister has uh, directed us to look into the uh, food processing industry particularly in agriculture i mean uh, uh, i don't know whether this uh, is uh, good news to you because i don't see people are uh, and you know, an enthusiastic face but you should have an enthusiastic face because she specifically uh, you know directed us to create a unit to look into the matter how can we amplify or increase the intensity of activities in fruit processing because this is one of the uh, interesting the most important uh, uh, factor nowadays because as we are talking about agriculture is as you see uh, this is the standard like you know um, uh, ratio when uh, a country grows the rate you know uh, um, agriculture's share goes down but the uh, you know the gdp uh, which actually the agriculture contributes most of them goes to the value chain or to the service sector so which is not counted but in fact if we modernize it and we can uh, uh, participate more in trade with other countries by the way i'm very happy <laughs> with the uh, french trade gap but uh, i can tell you we don't want to be happy because we want to be equal the partnership uh, build up the equal partnership so that you know we can grow together so uh, trade imbalance is not the uh, intention of bangladesh uh, but since you know uh, everybody will be happy to see the you know gap i mean French will not be happy, but we will be happy. But our principle, the government's principle, is not to maintain a huge gap, rather build up the relationship. So I can also, uh, to, you know, um, assure our French uh, friends that we are um, working on uh, how we can build up. That is why actually Bida is established here. So Bida through Bida we encourage your investment we encourage in in such a way that you know we work together it is not a one way uh, 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 traffic it's a two way traffic so i think there are many avenues uh, although personally you know the french bread is quite uh, uh, hard for me to break or to eat but i think uh, we should learn uh, you know uh, more because uh, the best cuisine uh, in the world is uh, considered is from french so the cuisine or anything it is germinates or starts from the agriculture so i think i mean and, uh, another important factor is that if you i mean sometimes we try to ignore uh, agriculture you see all the developed countries have a strong agriculture up until now i mean so nobody actually uh, is developed I, mean, I i don't think that you can give me one single example who the, uh, the country is considered developed don't have a strong agriculture and the government of bangladesh considers it 
And I don't know whether you have seen the Honorable Prime Minister from day one, she emphasized on agriculture. And she said during the pandemics, the uh, uh, severe of the economy would be agriculture. So we don't have any uh, 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 dearth of uh, attention uh, towards this agriculture. And I think uh, the government would be more interested to hear from you so that we can uh, make uh, um, uh, prudent decisions. You see, um, I think uh, 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 our friend from uh, France, uh, who, who, well, he was probably uh, uh, sitting in Delhi. So um, I think uh, Milk, he was talking about the uh, during the uh, lockdown, what happened. In Bangladesh, what did we do? We, you know, stepped in, uh, particularly in the dairy sector, that, you know, uh, uh, all the, say, uh, uh, sweet stores, we kept open. And also we, you know, made special packages so that we can buy milk from the uh, farmers. So, you see, my point of narrating that event is that even if there is pandemic, you can get some steps observing your economy. And I think now, I mean, I am sure there are a lot of entrepreneurs here who would be, uh, uh, who are interested to know and to make their decisions. I think there are a lot of uh, opportunities created by this global pandemic rather than damages. Yes, if you look into the you know global mobility, it is less. But we should not consider the mobility. Uh, I mean, uh, physical mobility uh, is sort of like uh, the secondary affairs now, because you see, do you know where I am now? I'm in uh, in, in Shirazgan. I mean, sorry, Katangai. So, uh, in fact, there is no difference. I'm attending. Uh, 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 this um, meeting, how did it happen? Because of digitization. So is there any uh, problem of our activities or this uh, goal that we wanted to get out of this uh, 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 conference today? I, I don't think so. We have already uh, accomplished a lot. So you see, uh, even if we don't move and don't meet each other physically, but in fact, virtually we are connected, more connected than before. So there are uh, the, the highest strength in the, uh, you know, um, um, uh, I mean, uh, 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 digitization. You know, last week we had this conference, uh, I mean, it's a, a webinar with uh, the US Chamber of Commerce. We are talking about the digitization, I mean, so digital connectivity and uh, digital uh, wallet. You see, during the pandemic, all many of our uh, migrant workers are sort of uh, workless, right? We are considered. Did you, do you know um, the remittance flow has increased than before? Why did it happen? So that means there people are more employed? No. What is happening is that, uh, you know, uh, many remittances used to come in alternative channels in Bangladesh. So during this pandemic, the alternative channels are not active. So they had to send it through the uh, appropriate channel. That has increased the volume, you know. So this is the, again, good a contribution of this pandemic. It has brought up to our, our legal channels, then the legal channels, and also opened up a new frontier for uh, uh, financial tools. So this is another contribution that we should be uh, very happy of. So I think, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, uh, I, uh, I'm not going into the 
probably the uh, uh, very agriculturish uh, uh, subjects but i feel you know uh, in this pandemic one thing has been proven is that we have not ignored agriculture and we cannot ignore agriculture we have to focus more on agriculture and also the value chain including the food processing and other uh, opportunities which is globally you know we need together and the uh, op you know new frontiers are opening and then you know the pandemic has also proven us that we are more connected and we can very easily switch to the um, to the uh, alternative uh, means of uh, connect you know uh, means for trade and uh, you know industries so i think uh, i hope that this discussion is not going to end tonight is going to continue and um, from the uh, uh, honorable prime minister's office uh, i can uh, assure you that the honorable prime minister is uh, very much interested to listen to uh, the entrepreneurs more and also wanted to create opportunities and sometimes uh, we don't have the uh, real picture then you uh, you have because uh, um, you are the practitioners so um, we would be happy to hear from your side and we would be i mean uh, we'd be uh, delighted not only that we be committed we are committed to uh, solve the problems that you have and i can uh, also uh, tell the uh, french side that we would like to uh, reduce the gap but increase the trade so thank you very much i again thank uh, mr uh, mr said vamudalog for uh, probably uh, making it happen today because uh, he uh, invited me so um, i'm i'm very grateful to you for your patience hearing however it's uh, usually there is a good opportunity uh, in uh, again this is the digital you know um, uh, digital uh, i think uh, opportunity given to a listener that if you don't like it just to stop the camera and go elsewhere so <laughs> i hope you have not done it you have listened and uh, thanks for your patience hearing uh, hearing uh, thank you uh, i wish you all a very good night thank you uh, thank you honorable chief guest actually uh, in our uh, you know title it is not only challenges we have also uh, said that opportunities and i think that pandemic has opened up lot of opportunities especially with regard to the digital transformation which has already set in but with the pandemic i think it will get momentum and especially um, from the uh, direction of our prime minister uh, her uh, emphasis uh, and trust on uh, you know digital transformation of agriculture that has actually um, prompted us to come forward with this idea of having a, a you know more discussions and invite you to be the chief guest <coughs> at today's uh, event together with um, uh, Bida. And actually, uh, while we're having uh, these discussions, we're having uh, the reporters are uh, preparing some uh, recommendations. And uh, uh, maybe just uh, if you have time, I can uh, if you give me five minutes. I can just go through this small note that I have received so that I can share with you. Actually. First, I'd like to uh, thank our uh, valuable contributors um, uh, for their valuable uh, contributions. Uh, our today's discussions have shown that in our strategy to overcome the adverse impact of COVID-19, our agro sector uh, can indeed play potentially a very important role. Our discussions have shown how much, how with broad agriculture and subsectors, including crop, aquaculture, horticulture, floriculture, dairy, and poultry. This can play a very important role in our recovery and sustainable development future, focused on entrepreneurship, promotion, and job consolidation and creation. Presently, exports from this sector account for roughly about 
one billion US dollar, including exports of shrimp and fish. However, with planned growth, the agroprocessing sector can contribute in our export diversification and increase our exports manifold, reducing our dependence from single sector like RMG. Our discussions have also focused on how a mix of modernization efforts, continued emphasis on retention of jobs and generating new job opportunities all along the value chain will be important to us. To realize all these exciting possibilities, we, we call for policy support from your end, flow investment sources into the sector from the private sector, ensuring availability of skilled manpower that should come from the education system, adoption of modern technology, and very close mutually reinforcing collaboration between the government and the private sector. The broad recommendations that we have are number one, that the potentials in all the subsectors under the broader agriculture sector, including agriculture sector, among others, should be brought under planned interventions for entrepreneurship promotion and skill development schemes. Secondly, support through government policies, programs, stimulus, and incentives, modernization, digitization, mechanization, informization, and fourth industry revolution, fourth agriculture revolution frames, with immediate investment in smart agriculture and internet plus rural infrastructure and communication to bo boost knowledge intensity and efficiency in production, processing, and delivery of social, financial, and technical services in rural areas. The job creation target for the sector should have a balanced mix so that the modernization of the sector goes hand in hand with generation of job opportunities all along the value chain in the different subsectors of agriculture, as has been rightly pointed out by Dr. Asif. Also, I'd like to request uh, uh, the Honorable Chief Guest to entrust BIDA with active support from your office to convene policy dialogues, formulate actions, and facilitate the agro industrial transformation in coordination with key stakeholders in the government and the private sector. Actually, just before the uh, webinar, I had a meeting with the executive chairman at his office, and we said that we should have some uh, standing committee in BIDA with um, the active involvement from the private sector office so that we can have continuous dialogue on the uh, policy issues, on the impediments that the you know, current in, uh, investors are facing so that this can be addressed immediately. So this is where uh, I left your uh, kind of, uh, uh, attention. And I hope with your support, we can uh, overcome many of the difficulties which are, you know, all the very small, but you know, we need, uh, because, because for agriculture or for fisheries, there are so many issues which are cross-cutting. And then which it goes beyond their ministries, then it, it becomes a difficulty. So therefore, I think that VITA can offer the platform with support of the uh, Prime Minister's office, we can address this immediately and clear these things, uh, you know, and to, to allow the businesses to run smoothly. So maybe you can have some standing committees, uh, which can uh, meet periodically to overview se sector-wise problems and, uh, uh, you know, the, also the opportunities. Also, as I'm mentioning, that there's syn to develop a synergy from greater private-public cooperation should be given high importance, and specialized institutions from private sector should be extended help to enable them to carry out their work that would help realize the full potential of the broad agro sector and its sub-components. Fifth, undertake rapid measures to unlock available funds and financial services for small and medium-sized agro-entrepreneurs in value chain. For example, support programs that leverages publicly funded grant schemes to leverage loans and equity from commercial banks and entrepreneurs. And here, I just like to reiterate what you have just said, that one of the biggest problems for the banks to advance loan or credit to the small farmers, especially in the fishery sector, is uh, the risk involved. So if we can come up with some uh, credit guarantee scheme, that will uh, substitute the collateral. Because the small farmers, they can't offer any collateral. If there is a credit guarantee scheme, in case the banks fail to recover, then there could be some fund available with them that, that will ensure the banks would give them the comfort that in case the, <clears throat> there is a failure 
for reasons beyond the you know control of the farmers, especially climate uh, climate you know catastrophe like like tornado or sida. Um, so there is a export credit guarantee scheme, uh, credit guarantee scheme for the banks so that they can fall back upon them. And then they, once the shyness of the banks uh, are removed, then you know this will be on is own and can go for i mean no, no, we, i have that is why i have already mentioned that there is a credit grant scheme approved by the government i don't know whether it is uh, a, you know it has already covered the uh, fisheries sector if not then we will uh, definitely uh, you know um, advocate with the uh, Minister of Finance, so that this can also be extended it, it, to that. It is supposed to cover the uh, fisheries sector also because it is for the SMEs, CSMEs. So uh, it should cover the fishery uh, livestock everything. Actually, we had a meeting prior to the pandemic. Um, I met the uh, uh, governor, and he was appreciative of this idea. But he said that he need the, uh, some specific proposal from the Minister of Fisheries Livestock. So, um, no, 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 it is, it does not, as, uh, you know, respected uh, executive chairman of BIDA has already mentioned that, you know, since it is covered, so it does not need any uh, proposal from Ministry, I mean, Ministry of uh, Fisheries, because this is the guarantee given to the lender. Exactly. So, so you don't have to, you know, go to Ministry of Fisheries or anything, because you are doing a business and your business is covered by the government from its policy. So I think uh, you don't have to, because you are placing the demand which has, has already been approved by the government. No, actually, I, I, so you, you, you can uh, do only one thing, about, is that you can thank the government. That's it. Thanks. I'm talking about <laughs> the situation last year, uh, prior to all these happenings. At that point of time, so he said that they need some official proposal from the ministry. That is what the governor is telling. But now since it's there, so we can take advantage of that. And this is where I think BIDA can uh, first try these things. Also, uh, to harness the full benefits for export promotion initiatives, food safety aspects of potential exportable items should be given due consideration. Seventh is prioritize agro-processing and export diversification by creating production processing zones for important agriculture and aquaculture export products through special planning and mapping. As you, have, as you know, Minister of Planning, uh, Minister of Land has already done some zoning, but for, especially for shrimp, which is very much site specific, if we, we can discuss and decide uh, on the uh, you know, appropriate zones, and this could be declared as zones, in that case, we, not, we need not go through different ministries like land, environment, et cetera, for setting up any modern, uh, shrimp farms. And this is what until we remember we discussed when uh, in, 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 in the Department of Fisheries meeting um, in, in sometime in October last year. Correcting existing mismatch and complexities of regulatory policies in importing inputs, raw materials, and equipment for agri industries. There's a lot of, because uh, for, especially for uh, hatchery in, in the shrimp sector, what we find that there are some inputs which you need to, because as per input policy order, it is the Department of Fisheries which is the complete authority to give the specific you know clearance. Uh, but when it goes Mumbai, to if you don't get, mind uh, interrupting you, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I thought it is going to be two hours, but it is two and a half. I mean, uh, I'm being knocked by my next meeting that they are running late so if you kindly allow me then uh, i can join yes, and actually, that's all. respect I mean, that you know executive direct the chairman of vida is here and he is here to solve actually i am nobody i am just uh, you know uh, i am sitting in the pmo that is why probably i am getting a bit of preferences but in fact the activities will be done by respected executive chairman of BIDA. So I think you are at good hand. And if you kindly allow me with uh, the permission of the chair, then uh, I can join the hands of the other group.
Okay, we have to share. For us, we, we, we are done. And anyway, okay. the recommendation will, will be forwarding to you in due course through through uh, chair through executive chairman Bida. Before before uh, the uh, Mr. Secretary leaves, let me thank him for uh, joining this uh, very important discussion. Um, you know that uh, the principal secretary is so busy. Uh, he started his uh, morning uh, with some uh, programs. And hence, you can understand that it is almost 10, it is 9.37. Uh, and now he's going to attend another meeting. This is his life. So I must thank from the core of my heart that you remain uh, um, engaged with this discussion for the last uh, more than two and a half hours. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Uh, I think you can uh, uh, go for your next meeting. Thank, Thank you, you sir. Much. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Thank you, Thank Thank you. you sir. Thank you. So uh, now we actually we are almost at the fag end of our uh, program. So, but before I invite the chair of today's event, Mr. Mahmoud Shah Islam, Mr. Shah Bida, I'd like to share with you his brief background. Uh, Mr. Shah Islam took the helm of. Bangladesh Investment Development Authority, the principal agency for investment promotion and facilitation on September 4, 2019. He has spent several years working as the Secretary Minister of Health and Family Planning and also Secretary Election Commission. He did his uh, bachelor's and master's in law from Dhaka University and obtained an MBA from University of New Orleans, USA. He also has a graduate diploma on administration from the University of Canberra, Australia. Uh, with this, I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Shah Islam. And um, just uh, a few words, I have already uh, uh, sent the draft uh, recommendations to both the principal secretary and to executive chairman by WhatsApp. But anyway, this is a very rough and rudimentary. We'll be working uh, with uh, your office and in finalizing a report and also recommendations, which will be uh, sending to you and maybe throw you to the uh, Honorable Principal Secretary for necessary actions. And after the uh, uh, presidential uh, uh, speech, uh, our, um, uh, my colleague uh, in the chamber, Mr. Shahseed Kamal, um, uh, Chairman of the Policy and Focus Committee of the chamber, will offer a vote of thanks. With his uh, vote of thanks, we'll uh, end here. And so now I'd like to uh, uh, invite uh, the chair to make his intervention. Thank you very much, uh, Sayyid uh, Mahbubul Haq, President of Bangladesh Chamber of Commerce and Industries. Um, Friends, Bangladesh Chamber of Commerce and Industries. Uh, the Honorable Chief Guest already uh, joined, listened, talked, and he left. So my uh, thanks to him, uh, distinguished keynote speakers, and uh, the very learned uh, panel members. Assalamu alaikum and good evening to you all. I don't know, uh, after uh, two hours, 40 minutes, uh, whether uh, people will have uh, patience to listen to the chair. Uh, anyway, uh, what I would like to start with is today's or tonight's uh, deliberation of this entrepreneurship and uh, agriculture is a very fruitful one because during this last two and a half hours, what I uh, listened to and what I learned is really precious. It is not just something uh, um, uh, or what a layman's perspective, uh, perception uh, uh, thinks. It is something very uh, focused and also very pertinent to our economy. That's, the, uh, uh, that's how I see this uh, uh, discussion of tonight. Well, uh, at the beginning, I must uh, thank the French Bangladesh Chamber of Commerce and Industries. 
to bringing for bringing together so many prominent representatives of the private sector the think tanks the academia and for organizing uh, uh, this webinar at this critical uh, moments entrepreneurship uh, is the most crucial resources of a nation as it ensures the effective utilization of all other economic resources uh, the government of bangladesh has been focusing on developing these resources as it is critical for accomplishing sustainable employment generation and economic growth as part of the sdgs we are pursuing uh i'm trying to just read out uh, the paper because i had a mind to go through all the discussion that has taken place and to uh response to uh, some of the uh, points but i think that will take much more time and uh, i don't like to bother the participants so if i read out uh, some of my points uh, i think i could Uh, give relief to the uh, participants the government is also working to secure a higher contribution from the private sector investment in our gdp it is heavily emphasized in the 75 year plan which encourages investment initiatives and employment based on knowledge and technology and uh, in our today's uh, discussion i think the technology uh, occupied uh, the uh, maximum space and rightfully it was uh, uh, given this space because the pandemic uh, effect taught us how to adapt to the new situation and all the uh, discussions and also the uh, principal secretary the chief guest of today's webinar in fact emphasized on digitization uh, i mean uh, digital technology and uh, this site fully uh, you have done it this has even become more important now that covid-19 has prompted fundamental changes across the majority of sectors it has affected our finances human resources logistic and much more is testing our resilience and our ability to adapt uh, i cannot but mention the name of one lady who spoke tonight and uh, she spoke about three things that is very interesting capital capacity and what is that connectivity thank you very much we okay. need this tc we need this tree to sustain to grow further we need this tree to see uh, uh, it was very precise and it's very focused thank you very much its impact on entrepreneurial business is very significant availability of finance and security of employment have been heavily impacted in the majority of sectors including agriculture that was shown by the first uh, keynote speaker this period of uncertainty has affected access to agricultural product inputs and markets in bangladesh the shortage of workers has created problems reduction in the purchasing power may affect demand for fisheries livestock and daily products disruption in trade can hamper crucial export like fish and the supply of imported feed and other inputs all these are discussed uh, uh, in our tonight's uh, you know, webinar the government is committed to resolving these challenges and supporting the local ecosystem at the same time we want to commend and support business that have adopted innovative survival strategies i must uh, 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 congratulate and thank uh, Dr. Abdul Sattar Mando, uh, who uh, 
presented a very exhaustive uh, keynote, uh, keynote uh, in this uh, webinar. And uh, he has uh, highlighted the different aspects uh, and different subsectors of agriculture and the technical uh, technicalities that is that are involved in the agricultural sector and he also mentioned the way forward what to do how to do all these things thank you very much for uh, your uh, very good uh, keynote space according to the world economic forum the world is witnessed to surge in entrepreneurial activity and creativity during this pandemic Entrepreneurial businesses have shifted their focus to repurpose and redirect existing knowledge, skills, people, and networks to new needs that have emerged out of this crisis. We have many such examples in our country, and these will go on to create a new outlook for entrepreneurial entrepreneurship itself as a job choice. The Honorable Prime Minister, who has always emphasized the importance of development to agriculture, has announced stimulus packages focusing on agriculture subsidy, refinancing, farm mechanization, and the government's purchasing operation. Let me uh, also uh, discuss a little bit about the incentive package that has been uh, declared uh, by the uh, Honorable Prime Minister for the CSMS. And ever since the uh, package was declared, there is a sort of skepticism uh, amongst all the uh, even regulators, definitely the business and the think tanks. That even if the uh, incentive is there from the government side, uh, the financial institutions, particularly the banks, will not be that much interested to disperse this money because they have about this set uh, menu how to disperse, whom to disperse about, about this money, and they are very much interested about their profit profitability also, and also the uh, they are concerned about the risk of uh, recovery. So uh, immediately after the uh, incentive package was declared, in fact, from BIDA, we uh, recommended that at least uh, what we call the uh, risk guarantee scheme should be there. And we recommended to the uh, Bangladesh Bank for, for, for doing this. And there was a lot of discussion on this. And on, on the 6th of uh, August, when uh, we had the BIDA's second governing board meeting, uh, I met the uh, um, Bangladesh Bank governor, and FBCC president was also there. We discussed about the uh, uh, guarantee scheme, risk guarantee scheme. And he was telling that it is almost final, and now tonight, you heard that uh, it has been finalized. And uh, you need not be worried about the uh, any uh, agriculture subsector because all these are included in the CSMEs. And the uh, guarantee scheme is for the CSMEs. So uh, I, I believe that all of the, these will be included uh, in this. And uh, that is really, really necessary. Because uh, the, uh, in the post-COVID era, we need to focus on our agricultural growth. Because uh, uh, as uh, 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 the keynote speaker mentioned, that though the, the contribution of agriculture to GDP is only 13%, but it caters employment for 4% of our population. So uh, this is very important. And I think this uh, risk guarantee scheme, uh, when it is implemented, and this uh, incentive package is properly disbursed uh, to our uh, farmers to uh, 
fishermen to our uh, uh, um, small businesses. This will boost up the economy, uh, ensure employment of our uh, people, which is more and more important. We are at the same time heavily focusing on business climate reforms and online investor services to bid us one-stop services to introduce ease for investors in the regulatory services arena so that businesses can be more efficient and profitable. Uh, this I want to uh, further uh, expand for your uh, knowledge that BIDA is trying very hard to provide the uh, regulatory services uh, that is needed by the business from a single platform. Uh, at the moment, we are providing 21 services of seven uh, government agencies, including BIDA. But at the end of this year, by uh, this 31st December 2020, I believe that we'll be able to uh, get another, uh, maybe another 30 services uh, to this platform. Then um, around 15 services can be provided from the single platform. And uh, by 2021, we want to reach uh, to the private sector with uh, 150 services from uh, 35 different government uh, of, uh, agencies, uh, ministries, divisions, and agencies. So this will definitely give much comfort to the uh, our business people in our country. The nature of innovation we are witnessing can sometimes be incremental because not everyone can speedily adapt to the requirements of e-commerce or mechanized production. Still, this kind of strategy is essential for adapting to the new normal. And I am fascinated by uh, one word by Dr. Mahavuzuddin of ADB. Uh, in World Wars, he was telling about polarization. This is really fascinating to me. So long we were hearing about four I, it's for industrial revolution. But now he's uh, bringing in revolution in the agriculture sector with the word forization. Yes, uh, uh, and, and, and Mr. Eric uh, Fajero from France, he also talked about uh, 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 the mechanization and also uh, uh, with this, uh, Yes, Dr. Asif Naimur Rashid from uh, Ruby. He talked about this uh, AI in agriculture, precision agriculture, IoT, data connectivity, green precision agriculture, all these things. These are very new to me, but, uh, but very interesting. And I think in uh, future Bangladesh, we need all these things. And he's very right, Mr. Rashid is very right, that initially there might be a perception that with the introduction of this uh, uh, AI in agriculture, the people will lose uh, some of their uh, employment, but that's not the case perhaps. Perhaps that will create more opportunity for our uh, for farmers. Uh, well, uh, I want to finish with uh, the skills part. Uh, our uh, um, project director of ESDP, he talked about uh, uh, his project, and I just uh, want to finish with this. BIDAS Entrepreneurship and Skill Development Project is based on this very idea that entrepreneurship is not just for a handful of people who have access to the right education, funding, and networks. One of the primary focus of the project is to promote national productivity, especially for supply linkage. Our training centers are present in all the districts to ensure this participation and to make sure that no one is left behind. We believe in the inclusive growth. 
you have already learned about the success and positivity this project has instilled in its graduates. And these graduates are now not uh, job seeking, rather they are going for entrepreneurship. Of ESDP successful graduates, as many as uh, more than 2,500 entrepreneurs volunteered to produce fresh supplies and deliver all types of essential to homes across Bangladesh under the phone A Nittu Panno during the uh, lockdowns, a delivery platform by access to information HY. I don't know whether you know about it or not. Our young entrepreneurs who were trained uh, from this uh, ESDP project, in fact, they got engaged in delivering uh, the essential products to the doorstep of the people, uh, braving the uh, challenge of COVID-19. Uh, and uh, uh, in fact, they use the uh, digital platform to uh, uh, get the demand from people and they deliver uh, the essentials to the doorstep of the people. Okay. Well, let me just finish with an assurance from uh, Bida's side. Uh, whatever policy support you need, the recommendation of tonight's webinar definitely uh, said that Mahmoud will uh, uh, share it with us and uh, we work on it. And as the uh, uh, principal security chief guest of tonight, uh, tonight's webinar mentioned, this is not the end of the dialogue, this is the beginning. We will keep on doing this and we want to hear from the practitioner so that we can uh, uh, give uh, a fact-based uh, recommendation from the, for the government. And the government of Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina is definitely ready to stand by our farmers, our fishermen, our small uh, entrepreneurs. Definitely uh, she is there, you know her. Uh, I don't uh, like to put uh, repeat it. Uh, I think uh, every people in Bangladesh now know what Sheikh, Sheikh Hasina wants for this country. She has dedicated her, her life for the people of this country. So, uh, uh, a, 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 as the Apex uh, Investment Promotion Agency of, of this country, Biga is ready uh, to uh, lend support to our private sector. With this uh, words, I want to thank you all again. Thank you, Sayyid Mahmoud al -Hawk. Thank you, all the uh, panelists, keynote speaker, uh, for joining and speaking. And also, at the fag end of this uh, webinar, after uh, almost three hours, uh, for listening to me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Honorable Chairman, for your very encouraging, assuring words. Certainly you will be in touch, as you have said, and the Prince Sheikh just said, that this is the just beginning, and we hope we'll continue our dialogue to the better band um, of the economy for the, of the people, and our partnership will uh, continue to grow from strength to strength. And now I uh, invite uh, uh, my colleague, Mr. Shah Kamal, to offer a vote of thanks. Shah Kamal. Thank you, Mahmoud. Uh, we, we are almost... Uh, at the end of this uh, long but uh, uh, very exciting, wonderful, knowledgeable uh, discussions. And uh, I think each of us are enriched with whatever we have heard. Uh, as as uh, 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 our president said, uh, that this is the first seminar uh, in the series out of the uh, three, three series uh, seminars, uh, which uh, uh, is being hosted by the chamber with the collaboration of BIDA. Uh, we are extremely pr uh, uh, proud and obligated to BIDA for the support. Corona is a global problem, gro global issue, but as the uh, uh, Chief, Honorable Chief Guest has rightly said, that uh, this also gives uh, 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 
opportunities so but those opportunities needs to be availed unless we avail it 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 to be availed by somebody else and if you can avail it uh, it will uh, create uh, employment so and that is the way forward what we had been aiming for uh, uh, aiming for out of this seminar so uh, now is a, the the uh, the part of the thanksgiving uh, our deep gratitude to the chief guest dr ahmed kaikus honorable principal secretary prime minister's office uh, for uh, giving his valuable time uh, and and attending this long seminar and uh, and also for his assurances we'd like to thank uh, the chairperson uh, mr mohammad shirajul islam whom we consider to be our man sitting in government and ad advocating for us thank you very much sir uh, and with your assurance i'm, I'm sure the business world will, uh, business uh, 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 activities will go forward in bangladesh uh, keynote uh, thanks to uh, keynote speakers uh, mr akm hafizullah khan uh, i was personally very much encouraged to uh, uh, know that uh, there is a 20% conversion of into entrepreneurship out of the training that he has trained which is very high uh, but at the same time i mean uh, care should be taken that they are not shredded off in these days of crisis but this is a very uh, a very uh, a positive uh, effort i should say and thanks to you mr ms sattar mandal sir for sharing your vast knowledge with with us and i'm sure we all of us are benefited i like to thank the panelists uh, mr ansari managing director of aci limited mr mushir rahman managing director paragon group uh, i think both of them are our chamber colleagues mr fauzia yasmin uh, is pahani director is pahani agro limited mr mohammad ashraful islam country manager uh, country project coordinator shaping industry inclusive finance transformation shift mr asif naimur rashid chief Info information officer robi exiata limited uh, dr mohammad saleh ahmed chairman carnel foundation and former consultant of world bank and fao mr mahfuzuddin ahmed former advisor and chief rural development and food security asian development bank and mr eric fajol director business funds of south asia i would also like to thank our broadcasting partners dhaka tribune Media partner Bonik Bartha, Financial Express, Bore Kagoj, and grateful to our sponsors Lafarge Holcim, Janata Bank Limited, ACI Agri Business, Ispahani Agro, Corona Power Generation, and Ruby Exiata. Without your support, uh, it would have it would not be possible to organize such event. And finally, I would like to thank all the participants, viewers. an audience who has taken uh, uh, this long time we have lost him is it I think we lost him. Yeah, I think maybe some uh, power short is cut it out or something like that. Anyway, um, uh, I think that uh, we like we have, we have come to the end of this um, event today, and just uh, by extending our invitation, the next webinar uh, that is um, uh, post COVID nineteen uh, challenges and. Um, the challenges and opportunities for entrepreneurship and employment in e-commerce in Bangladesh. It is. It will be held on September 19, 2020, uh, at same time at 7 p.m. Saturday. So, with this invitation, 
uh, we'd like to come to the close of this webinar. Thank you very much for all for your uh, active participation. Thank you. Thank you. Very you. Much. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mahmoud Law. Thank you. And thanks, uh, Vida Chairman. Thank you. Very Thank good. You. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Dr. Mahfouz, the next time I will talk to you about the many of you. Yes, sir. Sir, 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 Sure. Okay. Thank you. 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 Sir, Mahmoud Alak sir, thank you sir. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum.